Deputy Speaker, and uh, I also would like to congratulate my right hon. Friend, the Member for North Somerset, on securing the second reading of his Private Member's Bill, the Down Syndrome Bill. My right hon. Friend's passion to help address the challenges faced by people with Down syndrome has been unwavering. And I want to thank him and for all those who supported the bill, many honourable colleagues here today, for bringing forward a bill to address this. And also to all of you, all the honourable members, for their contribution. I have really enjoyed the debate. I too have learnt a lot, and it is um, such an important time for such an important debate. I also want to pay tribute to Sir David Amos, who cared deeply about supporting people with learning disabilities. He was arranging for us to have a cup of tea to discuss how we could work together to do this. Sadly, now this cannot happen, but I want today to also mark Sir David's passion to improve the lives of all those people with learning disabilities. Now, people with Down syndrome should have the opportunity to enjoy all aspects of our society and to have access to the services and the support that will enable them throughout their lifetime. And I wholeheartedly support the Down Syndrome Bill. Sometimes you are lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time, and this is one of those occasions for me, because my nephew, Joseph Gibson, is one of the estimated 47,000 people in the UK who has Down Syndrome. Joseph is a funny and bright teenager. He loves his school, has a great group of friends, and is a huge football fan, supporting Liverpool, of course, and also his local team, the O's, Leighton Orient. And most importantly, Joseph is happy and thriving. He's learning, he's developing, and he demonstrates his ability, not his disability, every day, as all young people and adults do with Down syndrome. But my brother and sister-in-law, Marcus and Sarah, have had to work incredibly hard to access the services that have made it possible for Joseph to develop his confidence and independence. And we've heard from many other families, who have, and, and also I pay tribute to those who are up in the gallery today, uh, how difficult they've found it, how much they have been fighting that battle. Um, and I want everybody to know that uh, this bill, our support for it, and everybody's support in this chamber, hopefully those battles will become a lot easier. I know that today people with Down syndrome are struggling to access the services that they need, and I've seen this with my own family. It is not right. It must change, and we will change it. I recognise that the legal duties and frameworks are already in place to ensure services are tailored to people's needs, but we know this does not always happen for people with Down syndrome and their families. There is a pressing need to raise awareness of the unique needs of people with Down syndrome and how they can be met, so that public authorities know how to meet their existing duties and so people with Down syndrome can thrive in their community. But this is exactly what this bill seeks to address. For the first time, the Government will be required to publish guidance on the specific needs of people with Down syndrome and how to meet them. And the relevant public authorities providing health, care, education and housing services must have due regard to it in carrying out their functions. And this is a significant obligation on authorities. There can only be strong reasons for not following this guidance. And importantly, people with Down syndrome and their families will be at the heart of this. They will be involved with the development of the guidance, as well as those who are responsible for planning and designing these services. I believe the impact of this bill will be wide-reaching. It creates the foundation to ensure people with Down syndrome stay well, receive the right education for them, and to secure the appropriate living arrangements to, to support their transition into employment, their transition into their old age and to help them to be a part of our society in the way that they want to. So why a bill that focuses specifically on people with Down syndrome and why now? Down syndrome is a genetic condition. Every person with Down syndrome is a unique individual, but they often face common health risks. Almost half of children born with Down syndrome have a heart condition. There is significantly higher risk of becoming unwell through infection, which can be life-threatening. And they may need also, and often do, additional support with their speech, hearing or vision. And evidence tells us that people with Down syndrome have specific patterns of development that are unique to this condition. Sadly, there is an increased risk of early onset dementia. The NHS recommends regular checkups to look for these signs from the age of 30. 
And also, I'd like to acknowledge that mental health and physical health, of course, are two very different things, and we will very much look to focus on mental health of uh, people with Down syndrome, in fact, our mental health strategy that we'll be working on uh, throughout the coming months. And people with Down syndrome are thankfully living longer. This is not 1983 or 1984 when the Honourable Gentleman was born, um, where people with Down syndrome lived on average to 25 years old. In 2021, people with Down syndrome are on average living to 60, and I'm pleased to see that this is continuing to increase and the pace of increase. For me, it's clear that this bill is not about giving people with Down syndrome more rights or enhanced treatment relative to others. It is about ensuring that there is a level playing field so that they can access the services that they are entitled to in the same way as everyone else, and that their needs are understood so services will be developed to meet their needs. I fully recognise with respect to redress that, despite the legislation, there may be still occasions where people with Down syndrome and their fa Down syndrome and their family do not feel that their needs are being met, and there must be clear, accessible, and fair processes for people with Down syndrome and their family to raise concerns. We want people with Down syndrome and their families to be able to resolve concerns with authorities directly, and these processes should be easily navigated and not at great cost for families. We're considering how. The routes to redress are working for people with Down syndrome and whether they are delivering the outcomes they, they need, but it is essential that we get this right. And I do anticipate returning to this subject as the bill moves through the House. And this is a hugely important bill for all the reasons I have spoken about today. I recognise that providing the right support for people with Down syndrome is a matter which resonates across the whole of the UK, and we've had some contributions from other parts of the UK today. But the scope of this bill, I'm very happy to give way. Thank you very much for giving me. I'm just wondering if the Minister would be in a position to uh, open discussions with the Scottish Government, Welsh Government and uh, the Administration in Northern Ireland uh, to make sure that uh, either during formal meetings or more informal discussions that this is put on the agenda so that uh, the information you have can be shared across the rest of the UK and the benefits uh, of the Bill uh, shared also with uh, those with Down syndrome and their families. Minister. Yeah, yes, um, I, I, I very much uh, have had some of those conversations have happened, but I very much will continue those as well because the scope of this bill today only, only covers England. But of course, health, care, education, and housing are also devolved matters as well. Um, so I know there's a commitment, though, to improve the outcomes for people with Down syndrome in Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, including through legislation. And I do look forward to working with other health ministers on this matter, and I know that they are committed to do that as well. Uh, I look forward to aligning policy, practice and the guidance wherever possible, so that best practice for social inclusion for people with Down syndrome can be realised across the whole well, of the friend, UK. Just on that point, very I'll happy to be brief. I heard a lovely story a few years ago. A young man living at home but travelling to a daycare centre independently on a bus did it for many months. And then his parents got a telephone call saying, we haven't seen your son for a month, where is he? And they said, well, he's leaving in the morning and he's coming home in the evening. So the next morning they followed him discreetly and halfway along the bus route he got off the bus, walked into a builder's merchant, I think, where he'd got himself a job. Surprising, but perhaps we shouldn't be surprised. We should liberate these young people to make great decisions. I completely Minister. agree. I mean, a number of honourable members have mentioned how important employment is uh, to, to all of our lives, actually. I mean, it gives us purpose, it gives us structure, it gives us uh, friendships, it gives us uh, relationships. It's really important, and that shocking number of 6% is something we all have to work hard to uh, overcome. And also, not just uh, Down syndrome, other learning disabilities. I think the number for young people with autism is 22%. Again, not good enough, and that's something that I very much hope to address in my role as Minister for Care and Mental Health, which includes learning disabilities in the brief. To conclude, Madam Deputy Speaker, we are working towards a more inclusive society for people with Down syndrome. This bill is one more step towards making sure that authorities are supported in delivering services that meet the unique needs of people with Down syndrome, so that this can happen also consistently across the country. Once again, I do congratulate my right honourable friend, the member for North Somerset, on this important work. I was very happy and glad that I was the Government Minister 
in place uh, when he came forward with his private members' bill, and I am delighted to be able to offer the government's full support. Dr Fox. Yeah. 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 Speaker, if I may just say a, a few words in conclusion, and can I thank colleagues not only for their support, but the warmth of their support for this measure today, including uh, my honourable friend, the Minister, who has helped throughout, has been invaluable. It's